Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I would like to focus on the Merchantman, possibly the most popular ship in the game for good reason. It's certainly one of my favourites. It's been a while since we've heard any news, since the production of this magnificent wonderful machine was temporarily stopped. No longer in production, that does not mean we can't have a good route around. And try to formulate some theories and all that good stuff about the Banu Merchantman because it is a superb ship and easily one of my favourites alongside the Perseus. This ship really drew me into the game. I remember watching CitizenCon two years ago and just being like, oh my god, this ship is going to be incredible and I'm sure many of you feel the same way. It's gone through a series of concept changes from size to shape. As you can see here, the older version on the right is um, smaller bit more aggressive I can see why they decided to tone that down because the Banu are very sort of intricate with their designs and I think the design on the right although smaller is certainly more aggressive looking and I think that didn't suit the characteristics of the Banu as much as people would want it to right it's got more of a vandal type of aggressive aggressive look to it it's something that the Banu themselves are not particularly renowned for. The Banu are a group of alien species who love to indulge in trading and showing off. Those two aspects of their life are predominantly what they live for. They love to trade. They love to have nice shiny things. They are the space crows in the verse and they operate in Sulis which is you can think of those as tribes and they pass down their Banu merchantments from family to family to generation to generation. Um, but they do do things in style. They like style. They're very, very poignant about making a point of look at all the nice stuff I have. And there are, there are of course, telltale signs in the game regarding their flair for exuberance. The Banu merchantman um, will come equipped with the Banu defender. The defender, if you look closely enough, has the telltale signs of those Banu traits and it is in itself a fantastic ship with many qualities, range being one of them for a fighter. But if you look close enough you'll begin to notice that the Banu characteristics start to shine through. As you can see here we have various gold plates and delicate etchings marked around on the Defender in game right now. So the merchantman, I imagine, will carry these characteristics over and be just as flary as the defender. Yes, this ship is a fighter, the defender, and it's designed to go long distances and defend that merchantman. Um, that doesn't mean that they won't kill you in style. As you can see, it's very delicate, ornate etchings along the side of the defender itself. So the telltale signs are there, which would lead us to believe that the merchantman will almost certainly be carrying the same amount of exquisite detail that can be found on the defender. So what we have here are the potential materials that the Banu are accustomed to using or might potentially use for their ship designs and as you can see the merchantman in this particular image is dripping in some of these materials. This sort of bronze rustic gold in some respect with hints and tints of purple um, so to say that their materials um, are bland is not the way to say it they are of course very elaborate very intricate um, intricate in design there are etchings and cogs and lights and all sorts of things that the, the Banu are very fond of to establish and make themselves stand out from everyone else it is a very unique society when a Banu is born, it is immediately purchased by the state and looked after by the state. Once they figure out what that child is good at, they then put it into a Suli that specializes in that role, i.e. if the child Banu becomes excellent at building ships, he will join a ship, he or she will join a ship building Suli where they will spend the rest of their days manufacturing ships. You do not need to be related in the Banu to work. Um, for different Suli. So they have a very interesting and sophisticated look on life and I for one cannot wait to interact with the Banu in the verse at some point in the future. 
So the banner itself, like I said, has been through, sorry, the Merchantman itself has been through numerous concept changes. As you can see here, this is a fairly old concept image. But the general shape and size of the ship hasn't changed all too much. It's definitely grown in size. Um, a lot of people enjoyed the original concepts, but it was more pointy, as you can see here, a bit more aggressive, a bit more angular. Um, I mean, that turret at the top of this particular image looks immense. Um, that looks like that could penetrate a planet. <laughs> you know, that looks something something you don't want to mess with. So a lot of people did sort of like these original concept images. I like them, but if you look closely, you can start to see that aggression poking through and it does start to resemble Vandal sort of behavior in their ship building to some extent. So I can understand why they've tapered that down and made it less aggressive, a bit more um, calming to look at, not so in your face. Um, as you can see here, there's a distinction between the original concepts and the direction they took with this ship has changed quite significantly. For the better, I think. It's, you know, every species needs to have its own identity. The Tavaran, very bird like alien species. Vandals, obviously, just aggression, pure aggression. Everything they do looks evil. Um, the Banu need to be a little bit more relaxed in their approach to shipbuilding right moving on to the ship itself so as we can see we have the ability to carry a fighter whether that's a defender or not will be entirely up to you it does look like a snug fit in there it's also just the med bay 12 o'clock of the defender there um very very useful to be able to carry an extra ship for the banu's uh, protection. It is, after all, a freight forward stroke trade ship. So, multi role at its biggest. This this vessel is going to be a monster, and we'll dive into some of the internal areas when we progress through the video. So, the ability to carry a fighter of your choice is obviously going to pay dividends. For protection, we have some whopping size sevens at the front. I believe they're size sevens, they could be size eight, but I'm ninety percent sure they're size sevens. And I absolutely love that animation of them just popping out like that and then retracting when you don't need them. That's very, very cool. I think that's a nice touch. Um hopefully the tachyon cannons get some love because the defenders are useless, they are no good, so I'm hoping that they come and rectify these particular weapon sets because I don't actually want to swap those out at the moment because they just look too cool. And then of course we have the infamous retracting and elevating turret which comes out again with another nice animation it just appears from nowhere. So the Merchantman, although designed for trade and it has its marketplaces and various shopping areas and all that good stuff, is still more than capable of dishing out a significant amount of DPS should the Merchantman get cornered, which I imagine it will because it will be a prime target of pirates and griefers and things of that nature. I wouldn't expect to be flying around in this and just not receive any kinds of attacks. It's going to be a very profitable ship to try and board, I would have thought. Now, let's take a look at some of the internals that we did eventually get from CIG. Bearing in mind that some of these images were shot in the wrong FOV, so it might look a bit out of shape in some areas, especially the external shots, so just take that with a pinch of salt. So immediately, we're greeted and this is grey box by the way so immediately we're greeted by this ginormous turret and this very atmospheric seat with that light shining down on it that's the turret entry seat obviously um, now this is a very very big room for a turret and I expect it to be filled with other things not just a seat because I'm hoping that they are not going to make the same 600i mistakes um, where there was a lot of wasted space but as this is just early early phase I can't imagine this room just being dedicated to the turret that would be a huge disappointment I just don't see it happening let's hope I'm correct in that analysis so you hop in the seat and up you go unfortunately the animation wasn't working at the time that they filmed this recording 
so very interesting in there and then we come to the bridge area um, which I think is going to be absolutely superb you'll note that we have some point defense guns here as well um, shooting down missiles and all that good stuff maybe giving trouble to light fighters if that is the case um, so there is some protection there these weren't added in the footage um, that they released so those turrets are still to be added um, but the bridge design itself is very sleek I very very much enjoy what I'm seeing from the bridge I think it's going to be excellent to sit in this ship and command it and or fly it I think now the bridge has also been through various concept phases and they've made some tweaks and changes as you can see in the top left here we have an original sort of concept of how they might design the brand new bridge and then we have the more recent one and the first thing that jumps out to me is the layout um, it's very very spacious and I really enjoy the consoles they're sort of closed off there's no way you can pilot this ship by poking your head over um, so I imagine it's going to be all remote driven. That's just a pure guess. I imagine there's cameras that you'll be using to fly this ship um, because I don't see how you're going to see over those consoles but they look incredible. The architecture, um, swooping lines, curves, almost like ribs in some areas of this bridge. It really looks like it's a flowing area of the ship. It's really, really nice. I really like it. Um, and it does appear to be some storage lockers, maybe army, um, army lockers, armory lockers throughout the bridge as well. So let's take a closer look at what they showed us recently. So again, this is the external view, which was filmed in the incorrect FOV. The correct FOV will be towards the end of the video. So it looks a bit square and flat when in fact it is not. So that was a, a little mistake they made. They came clean with it in the end, but um, so the first thing you'll note when we look at the bridge is I always feel like the bridge here looks like have you ever seen a crocodile in a river with just its snout poking out this black area with the etchings on it that kind of just reminds me of an alligator or a croc nestling in the top of the waves while it ripples that's just something that popped into my mind you can disagree with me and call me mad but that is just that's what it reminds me of. I don't know why it just does, but it, as you can see, we're starting to get the etchings. We've got these purple tints being located just behind the uh, cockpit windscreens there. So once inside the ship, we are on these massive console areas. So this is currently the pilot um, seat and they actually incorporated Xi'an tech to raise and lower these seats so that the pilot and co-pilot are able to overlook these ginormous um, consoles uh, obviously sight being in pretty important to navigate a ship of this size and the Banu will take anything from anyone if it's superior they have no qualms they just want the best of everything so they decided to incorporate Xi'an tech for the co-pilot and pilot seat which is pretty cool so we get another alien species technology incorporated into a big alien ship which is very cool You'll note that there are two extra seats behind. Turrets can be operated from those stations. So you can have four here. And in the original concept, somewhere at the back there should be a captain's seat, I believe. But we begin to see how intricate the internals of the merchant are going to be. I like the architecture. There's a lot of curves and waves. There's no harsh right angles anywhere to be found on this ship. It's all very flowing. It's a nice area of the ship. I just wish they hadn't done it in this light. It's far too bright and kind of dilutes what we're trying to look at, but we'll do our best. So turrets can be operated um, from these rear seats remotely, which is pretty cool. And as we sweep around, we begin to get a little bit more detail on what direction the ship is going to take. We have an evac area here. And in the evac area, we have two suit lockers and the escape pods themselves. So should bad things happen to you you can quickly grab some emergency suits and then prepare to jettison from the ship so that is really cool uh, in the operations area of the ship and again that is replicated symmetrically on the other side so that's very useful to know that you're going to be able to grab some suits and get the hell out should things turn a deep dark corner then we make our way down these steps again not too much in here at the moment but i'm loving the architecture Everything's so free-flowing and curvy. 
very unique internally. I think the only straight lines are the sort of table function and steps that we have in front of us right now. So, very cool. This is the sanctuary. This is the uh, part of their religious belief system. Um, part of the theme of the ship is the tree of life. And this is the top. And it's very important to the Banu for their religious belief system. Moving on then, we come to some of the weapon systems that we might expect could change, but from this particular image we can see we have some more defense turrets here. Um, again, mainly for trying to swat away maybe light fighters and or missiles to destroy incoming ordnance that might cause you, your crew and your customers a threat. Don't forget you could have civilians on board who are trying to trade with you with the various markets that you have. So defense is important, hence the need for a hanger and a light fighter, a defender. Um, so the two small point defense turrets at the top there, they weren't in, or at least they weren't modeled yet when we got to see the external of the ship. But the twin turrets um, are very much modeled and placed underneath the wings. So. I couldn't see those smaller point defense turrets. I think it's just a case of waiting for them to be added. Um, so they are nestled under the wings. They have a good rotation, a good gun depression, I would have thought, being underneath the wing. And there is no real um, line of sight issues for this turret that I can see from the images that we have. We'll have to see until we get the ship, but I think they will be fairly effective at shooting down missiles and torpedoes and things of that nature because there's no prominent um, obstructions blocking the line of sight of these turrets um, that I can see. It's very hard to tell at this moment, but at the moment they look like they are placed in a fairly respectable area of the ship. So still a lot to come with the Banu Merchman and maybe there are almost certainly going to be some more tweaks to its um, final uh, release point, I would have thought, um, because it is a massive ship and there are a lot of areas to cover. Um, but the, as turrets go for Star Citizen, the Merchantman certainly has some of the best purely in terms of line of sight. Um, and not to mention those two ginormous um, nose-mounted size 7s um, are pretty potent. Here we have the wing animations. Now this is something that did change because I believe the metrics didn't fit. Um, they were still a little bit too big and they needed to retract the wings in a way that would be more effective and easier to park the ship right so they've changed from that original wings folding to the wings having a new animation completely as you can see here where they withdraw into themselves which is a very sensible and smart solution because the ship doesn't lose its shape and its character it merely just loses the size of its wings and the animation is actually pretty cool um, again, note the detail and the etchings um, on the edge of the wind. The leading edge flaps here, you can see if they are flaps, um, are covered in gold. So, a simple change, but one I welcome. I didn't quite like the looks of the wings up. It didn't quite suit the aesthetics of the ship, I think. It made it look a little bit weird. So maybe it was a cosmetic change. Um, maybe not. Either way, I think the wings retracting into themselves is probably a better alternative than just have the wings fold up like, a, I don't know, an F-18 on a carrier deck. It's um, it's a clever solution. Um, I like it. I think it's a, a better change. Now, obviously, the ship is absolutely massive. So not only does it have the carrier capacity, I think it's 2000 SCU, which is pretty impressive in itself but you are going to have customers making their way in and on your ship to see what wares they can buy there are numerous strategies you can have in place i'm interested to see how that pans out what kind of stuff we can sell sell sorry i do have a strategy in place for this ship whether or not that comes to fruition i don't know um but it's one i'm going to keep closely guarded to my chest for now because i do think it will be very profitable if we are able to do what I want to do with it. So it's a big if, but the ability to have a market is very cool. I think this ship has three markets on board, which is a lot of custom, a lot of potential business to be made on board this ginormous ship. 
you will of course enter the ship through the beginning of the tree of life here you will have various objects that you might want to sort of gently persuade your customers to maybe think about buying think of it as a good way to advertise what you're carrying walking up the tree of life surrounded by products that you've obtained throughout the verse and showing them off and maybe tempting people to kindly part way with their money so it's a very good um system it's something you find everywhere today anyway with adverts and things alike there's no difference here everything will be on display and try and tempt you into parting ways with your hard earned space cash i do believe that the first time that anyone uses this ship and traverses this entry point to the ship is going to be in a state of awe i imagine this is going to be extremely elaborate very unique very interesting and if it's got shop items on display it's going to be a very very phenomenal experience um, walking into the merchantman for the first time um, and customers i'm sure are going to appreciate that too again trying to tempt them to part with their hard earned space cash there's nothing wrong with that it's a business at the end of the day it's a flying freight business with some firepower the merchantman it is an excellent ship um, but as you can see that sort of tree of life theme that runs through the ship is very prominent and again very little in terms of right angles all very smooth and sweeping um, I'm interested to see how they make the entry point of the ship um, come to life I think it's going to be a very big part of the Banu Merchantman experience in terms of its freight capabilities it's fairly impressive now as you can see here again the ship uses Xi'an tech so the elevator will use anti-grav to get to and from the ship which is very cool very much like the top turret that seat and turret also uses the Xi'an tech and then deploys an air shield so you don't vacuum the ship when you enter that top turret so the Banu have no fear or sort of pride stop it they just want the best and if the Xi'ans are making the best tech in terms of hover tech and anti-grav tech then they're going to take it so that elevator as you can see with the tumbler on it will use Xion tech to lower and raise its cargo area 2000 scu is very nice um, we've got the whole sea on the horizon so that's going to be um, an interesting comparison between the whole series and the banu obviously the banu has one huge ability and advantage and that is the fact that it can land on a planet to deal um, and deliver its trade cargo or supplies whatever it might be as you can see here that is a lot of SCU protected inside the ship protected by armor and guns and turrets and shields so that is the huge advantage over the whole series I feel um, inside this is a rough idea of how these SCUs could be manipulated um, you can see there's um, various markings to where things are on the ship but as you can see it's a big sort of um, crane that you'll be using to manipulate the SEU to your liking maybe offload load unload throw whatever it is that you need to do to shuffle things around because being in a cargo area of the ship of this size is going to be an experience that's for sure um, as you can see here in this particular image we have a vehicle and then just loads of SCU and way up in the distance at the top there you have the cargo operator using the uh, cargo arm to move things around it's going to be an amazing area of the ship huge absolutely huge um, I hope they keep the detail in this cargo area I actually really like the lights and the way the walls look it does look very alien very sci-fi love the look of the uh, cargo area of the ship it's going to be absolutely superb i hope they stay true to that sort of design language because the cargo itself is absolutely massive absolutely massive all internally like i said has its own advantages we can land on planets we haven't gone from space station to space station sorting it out might be a little bit tedious though so you are going to have to be quite methodical as to where you store things there's going to have to be supplies for you, your crew, potential customers, the markets, things you're trying to sell. All of that stuff is going to have to be um, carefully planned out in order to use it. Internally, then, we get a brief look. Now, this is on the older concept ship, but some of it will still apply. They haven't deviated too much 
from the originals. So as you can see, we have a storage area, the hanging area, we have docking collars, cargo control, cargo room, marketplace public entrance, public elevator, crew elevator, crew access, engineering, markets, and then the guest rooms, the conference, a sanctuary, as we saw earlier, med labs, bridge, and turret access. So very complicated ship and you can see why we need six floors now because it is an absolute monster internally now i believe that customers or people that aren't part of your crew will be restricted to their movement in and around the ship so they're not just going to be able to board your ship and then go do whatever the hell they want they will be restricted in areas of access you're not going to allow a random individual to board your ship walk up and then just go sit in the bridge it isn't going to happen the areas indicated in in uh, this blue i believe represent the areas that customers will have access to everywhere else they will not be able to reach um, which is important like i said you don't want random people just doing whatever they want on board your ship you're going to have to be quite um, restrictive on their movement and you're going to have to account for them as well because if something bad happens then you are going to have to take in sense a roll call to see what's going on and who's missing etc so that is an important aspect of the ship um, again very much looking forward to see how they um, implement those restrictions maybe it's like fingerprint detections or something like that that brings us to the market area of the ship now this is probably one of the most important features this isn't the only ship to have a market though don't forget the kraken privateer will have a similar um, ability to sell with its um, various markets on board as well so the bannock merchantman isn't alone in that fact but this is what the customers are coming to see this is the area that is designed to make people part ways with their space cash and two floors so very impressive you'll notice there's individual i believe these will be shop stalls there's been a lot of people that ask yeah but what are you going to sell well maybe i don't have to sell anything maybe there is a miner out there that has way too much product that they want to display maybe they found some rare gems and i can say to that individual player okay i'll give you a license to come to my banu merchantman please you know sell what you want and i'll take 20 percent of the profit there's a way around it straight away there's plenty of opportunity for this ship crewing it is certainly something that could be an issue um but i am infatuated with this ship so it doesn't matter how hard it is i'm definitely going to try my utmost but there's ways around um making this market function you know i think there are a lot of people if i said to someone You've got X amount of product that you can't shift or you don't want to fly um, or drive to seven systems over. Then I tell you what, bring your product on board. I'll load it for you. Come sell it on my on my ship. The, it's a great, it's a two way thing. I think it's a great solution. Um, if not, then you're going to have various merchants on board. Maybe you've got loads of special products and unique items you've collected through your travels. And you're going to be able to display these in all the various sh shop areas of the market. I think it's going to be interesting. It's going to make great gameplay. It's going to encourage player-to-player -player interaction. I think there's a lot of good things that could happen here. And with the restrictions, obviously, I think some form of security may be needed. Whether it's you hire NPC security because, after all, shoplifting is a thing. And you can't trust any bastard these days. Um, so there are things and ways around it to make this a very effective part of the ship but overall architecturally and its current state that we see on screen right now it's very very cool this a flying market it's brilliant um very very much looking forward to seeing how this all pans out and more sort of how the community pull together i'd also like to see a merchantman being run by an organization with actual players for security and people fulfilling those roles the role playing for this is going to be an excellent excellent ship for any relatively medium or large sized orc maybe a small orc could easily get away with it too um depending on the numbers of course but it will add an element of gameplay which i'm looking forward to experience uh, maybe i'm the one that's been out exploring and come across a merchantman and wish to sell my goods to the owner of this merchantman you know there's trade deals to be had for certain there's a lot of player interaction who knows might what might happen but 
as you can see in these concept image, uh, images, this is hopefully the kind of look that the ship will end up being like. It's very, very cool, very spacey. I know that's not even a word, but that, you know what I mean, don't you? It's very, I don't know, I just like it. It gets, it does have that Banu feel of everything on board is extravagant and flash and 890 jump owners really should be worried because that ship is superb but I think the merchantman is going to throw up a little bit of competition for the 890 jump because this isn't exactly going to be an ugly ship to be in is it moving on then that brings us to this area of the ship which is Banu crew quarters now you might notice straight away that there's hardly any privacy and that is because the Banu as a species are very communal so it doesn't bother them that there's hardly any privacy they don't mind it at all and it's very much reflected here as you can see it's very well lit very calming atmosphere um, so this is an area of the ship where the devs try to put a bit more attention to detail above this floor is the guest quarters um, we didn't get a sneak peek at that but I imagine it might carry the same um, vibes across from this room to the guest room maybe with a few tweaks maybe it's designed for humans in mind I don't know um, but this is the crew quarters um, and it's pretty cool not sure what that is in the middle they didn't mention it so I really can't wait to find out is it some kind of jacuzzi or something I don't know I know that the med bay uses healing pools like, like gel there's like a pool of gel that you can sit in and it helps you recover um, maybe that's a Banu relaxing technique I don't know um, but it's very interesting in here obviously there is plenty of room for numerous players in this area so we'll have to wait and see what the guest room looks like Moving on then, we approach the med bay, which is just behind the sanctuary, I believe they mentioned. And as you can see, we have our main medical treatment bed in the center here. And then located either side, we have the recovery beds. But similar to that of the Carrick, but instead of using monitors and all of that electronic stuff, the Banu have opted for a nice sort of gel that you can sit in and that will aid your recovery process depending on the tier of injury maybe you've had an operation maybe you lost an arm who knows whatever accident that you've been in or conflict and you've come out worse for wear then these recovery beds rather than just laying in a uh, conventional bed we have a pool of gel that has healing properties that's pretty cool i like that that's really awesome that's a unique med bay for sure moving on then we arrive at the recreation social area of the ship so this is where food and camaraderie and all of that good stuff will happen you can see that they've actually stayed pretty true to the concept image here so this as you can see is some tables and seats it's a dining area of the ship so they haven't deviated too far from this original concept image that the tables are still prolific the seating arrangements are all still um, how you might expect to see them. We have like a food dispenser at the center there um, Which I imagine will use some kind of fancy tech to produce your meals um, So we can seat six maybe seven eight potential players Customers, I'm not entirely sure if this is sectioned off just to the crew I imagine so because of the lack of seating arrangement. I don't think there's like an onboard restaurant Not that I saw in the internal blueprint of the ship. So I think this is purely crew and it's not exactly a horrible place to sit. Um, if this is how this social area is going to be the finished product, then I'm all in. I imagine it will be even more exuberant once they build it and start adding more lights, floor lights, um, and all of that good stuff. So they did actually stay pretty true to the original concept um, of this social area of the ship. Again, I think that's part of the tree of life here as well. So it's very, very well thought out. I like that they've kept most of this original design in. Very cool, very sweeping, flowing internal area of the ship. It's going to be a good time to sit here, chill, talk nonsense, all that good stuff with your friends, players. Um, 
guests, whoever it might be, decide to let on board. Directly behind that area then is the cartography area of the ship, which is pretty cool. So you can then sit around, discuss where you're going ne next, um, what system. Maybe it will display your plotted routes. Maybe uh, you could discuss where you're going to deliver your spawn beacons to let people know you're open for business. There's a lot of planning that could be done in this social relaxation area of the ship. Um, I like it. Very cool. Again, hardly any hard right, angle, right angles in this area of the ship, at least from not what I can see. It's very sweeping. Massive area of the ship. Not a bad place to come and hang out, get something to eat, see where the ship's going. And then we have these huge bucket seats, if they are bucket seats. I mean, yeah, not too bad. It just shows you how puny humans are. Look how small we are compared to the Banu. Much taller seats for them. Yeah, I think a lot of fun is going to be had here. A lot of chill, especially going on those long journeys. Then, of course, this is the hangar area of the ship, which is... It looks bigger than it actually is, because the Defender isn't a massive ship, so I think this could be a little field of view trickery, perhaps. Um, don't forget, I did state that they filmed this in the wrong film with, uh, field of view, sorry. So, it does look a lot bigger than it possibly could be. I imagine any light fighter will sit in this hangar, because uh, not everyone's going to have a Defender that owns this ship or not everyone that buys this ship in-game is going to want to put a Defender in there. Um, so, we'll see. But as you can see, the animations do work. And it's fairly simple stuff, and just as awesome as the rest of the ship. Then we go to this elevator. Six floors. Six floors. That's ridiculous. So, we headed through that door. This is the customer entry point, the customer entry lift to the area of the ship so they'll be greeted by this sort of foyer area and then we go through this door and there's a conference room meeting area of the ship this is probably going to be similar in importance to that of the one on the 890 jump you know maybe you've got VIPs or ambassadors on board or as it's a trading ship it's more than likely that you're going to try and encourage trade deals and this would be the area of the ship that you would hold said trade deals. Um, whatever it is that you're trying to sell or make profit on. Or maybe you are communicating with another merchantman that has different product. And you want to come to terms. Then this is the place to do it. This is where the deals will be struck. This is where the money will be made. This is where alliances could crumble or be gold forever. Who knows? The concept image is awesome. And I hope that they keep every aspect of this sort of... I imagine, obviously, there's going to be numerous changes. But as it stands right now, from this particular image of the uh, conference room, I hope they stay true to most of it. Because it looks awesome. That is such a cool conference room. Um, now, those things in the background, I don't know if they're like holographic MFDs or things of that nature but if we can have that like is on the table you see right in front of you there there's like a cannon like a weapons deal maybe going down um if that table projects holographic images of what you're trying to sell i will die inside because that would be amazing so let's hope they can do that because it looks incredible in here there's sort of like gem green seats and the tables uh, it's really very very cool um yeah, definitely a very important area of the ship, and I'm glad to see um, that they are making progress with it as it stands right now. From the images we've got, fairly straight, straightforward, not too much to talk about in here. Again, the architecture, very curvy, hardly any straight lines anywhere. Even the table is rounded off in multiple ways. Um, very important area of the ship. I look forward to striking deals in here. Um, so they have made progress with the ship. It's a shame we couldn't see the entire ship, but at the time of filming, they were like, it's just too big. The episode would go on forever. And I was like, well, just do it. What's the rush? Um, so yeah, it's a very important area of the ship. And again, this hallway. Look at the size of this hallway. There, I don't think there are other ships that have corridors as large as this. 
so the shapes and flows of the ship are starting to come together. As you can see, we've got some basic lighting in here. I imagine this is going to improve drastically. Um, I think there's like one, two, three, four, maybe maybe five or six. There seems to be in the distance in the right hand corner there um, some sort of display uh, which will be a nice touch. What that turns out to be is yet to be known, but it's Banu, it's what they do. That then brings us to the VIP suites on board the ship. Now these areas are going to be dedicated to people you find particularly important for trade deals. Um, you're going to put them in a nice chamber and this is what they will look like. Um, VIPs will be important. You're going to want to impress that individual or individuals. Um, because you want the best deal for you, your crew. You know, you want to make that money and putting them somewhere that is very special um, is probably going to help persuade that individual to part with their money or make that good trade agreement and uh, whatever else that you want from them. I hope um, it has this sort of aesthetic that you can see on this image here. If this is the VIP suite, I couldn't confirm it. Um, so if you know, please let me know. But that's the kind of experience that the VIPs should be receiving on board the merchantman, um, which like I said, could help persuade them to make that all-important, vital uh, trade deal. Um, even from merchantman to merchantman, you never know. So, like I said, the 890 Jump is a very good ship, but I do start to feel like uh, you should be worried a little bit, Origin, because the Banu Merchantman is certainly coming out swinging because it's very elaborate in this VIP suite. Not saying that the 890 Jump suites are by no means shabby at all I, I love the 890 jump it's an absolute marvel of um what cig are capable of but i do feel like the merchantman is starting to show its teeth a little bit in terms of comfortability and technology and the interior is going to look superb so being a vip on board the bmm is certainly going to be worth your while you will be treated to a very nice time I would have thought there are worse places to sleep than the VIP suite so it has a basic table and some basic lighting in here um, but again it's very impressive how they've managed to make this entire ship with hardly any right angles at all and all very sweeping and flowing and curvy and yeah it's just uh, very well designed ship and it's going to be amazing when it's released and I cannot wait. So there is a lot to look forward to with the Mergerman and its potential. So that covers some of the internals of the ship. Um, it is massive. Again, the field of view is incorrect on these images. So it doesn't have that um, duckbill nose. It's much more pointy. Externally, there's still work to be done. As you can see, there are various items and, and or turrets missing, but they have implemented the basic sort of etchings onto the ship. Um, you can start to see it's getting its character in tradition with how the Banu operate. Um, the wings are different from when we last saw this ship. There's a lot of good things coming this way for this ship. It's such a versatile ship. I'm intrigued to see what the color schemes are going to be internally because gray box and white box obviously are not the same um you're not going to get the same flavor so we can see here that the original designs for how it might be lit and how you're going to interact with the ship and navigate your way through it are going to be very intriguing we have a sort of a green tint and gold color if it is even gold you know it could be a completely different material that just so happens to have the same colour as gold. We just don't know. But I do like the lighting and how that's been incorporated into the arc and the arch of the of the corridor. I think that's really cool. Um, so if they go for this kind of look, not necessarily the colour scheme, but this sort of well-lit, spacious, meandering corridors, I think it's going to be a fantastic place to explore as a customer, as an owner, as a crew member. Navigating your way around the Banu Merchantman is going to be a very pleasant experience. I um, thoroughly look forward to its release. I think the ship has so much potential, so many opportunities for gameplay, numerous player interactions. It's 
it's just going to be great. It's a, it's a superb ship, and one of the first ships I saw as Citizen Con was this, and it got me well and truly hooked and entrenched into Star Citizen. It's fantastic. Everything about it is unique, um, and it's nice. I like the alien ships. They bring... And free the designers, you know, they have to think outside of the box. I hate that term. I hate it. I do. But that is, uh, they have to. They have to be different. And it brings out the talent in the, in the developers. And I think they're doing a good job so far. I think it looks incredible. So here is the ship with the correct FOV. And that, guys, is my video on the Banu Merchantman. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a bit of a long one. But if you did, you know what buttons to press. And I, of course, will have more Star Citizen content en route to your location very soon. Thanks guys, take care, cheers.